Welcome, this is Garamon speaking. I've made a video that demonstrates that it's possible to engage much larger gangs than your own uh, by not engaging them directly but trying to capitalize on opportunity kills and trying to get tackler kills. So basically the main purpose of this video is just to show that you're not always limited by numbers and the limiting factor when it comes to playing with other gangs that is much larger than yours is dependent on their damage projection and also how much hard tackle they have such as a Hugin. The initiation of a fight is also of very p paramount importance. We were roaming through Nilsak in tribute and then 15W on the PND gate I scouted a gang that was far too big for us to jump in directly but it was but the gang itself um, had a few ships that we could kill, um, which was the tacklers. So we wanted to approach the fight in a way that would not put us at too much risk for us to, you know, get tackled and die, but for us to be close enough to them if they come in, so that they can at least apply damage to us, and hopefully that will prompt them to want to come into us. So how we initiated it, and just to put a little bit more context to this diagram, we uh, basically warped to the gate at 50 kilometers and we waited for them to jump into us. Uh, when they did jump into us, we held our uh, movement still, because um, they don't have any hard tackle ships that could tackle us at a range. They have to get close to us, and these ships are the viable kill targets. So they had, you know, 20 drakes, um, a bunch of interceptors, a vagabond, and curse and three scimitars. Because of the presence of the three scimitars and the fact that the main bulk of their fleet had drakes, uh, we're simply not going to be able to apply enough damage to, you know, kill the, uh, the, the bulk of their fleet. So the best we can do is just to try and kill what we can. Um, 20 drakes might seem a bit scary, but uh, without any uh, hard tackle such as a rapier or hugen, they're not that problematic because they're very, very easy to deal with. If they start shooting you, you simply micro warp drive outside of their range. If they are micro warp driving towards you while you are micro warp driving away, their effective range is actually 60 kilometers away from you. So in this fight, the drakes are being completely useless. Um, the only use they had was that it just ma made it so that we, we cannot go close to them, we can't go too close to them because it's too risky. But the reason we went in at 50k is because, you know, that's within Drake damage range. So um, I was hoping that that would prompt them to want to engage us if we were that close. When they started jumping in, the Vagabond was the first to start burning towards us, followed by the Interceptors. And this is where I start frapsing the fight. You'll notice that at the same time the tackle was burning towards us, we were also moving in the opposite direction. And that was mainly to ensure our uh, mobility, but also to keep our traversal low against their tackle. Unfortunately, I started frapsing a few seconds late. I only started frapsing when the Vagabond was in half shield, as, as he was the first one to start burning towards us, um, he was the logical primary target. It's worth noting that in situations like this, uh, nearly every kill that you'll actually get revol revolves around opportunity killing. It depends on how aggressive the enemy is being, how badly positioned the enemy is being, and how you're positioned. It's all about opportunity and taking it. So just for reference, uh, our gang format is a Tengu, Drake, Talos, Tornado, a Macariel, and a Cynobon Thrasher on Skimmy. And uh, also I'm the one flying the Macariel. Vaga, commit to him now! One thing to always watch out for is when the enemy target is running away. In this case the Vagabond turned around and he started micro driving back towards his friends. And there's three bad points for this. You know, we might lose tackle uh, because he's in deep fall off, we do a lot less damage, but also in this case he might get within wrap range of the scimitar and he might survive. So me saying commit to this vagabond basically means everyone needs to slow down 
or maybe even approach the Vagabond to try and keep up with him and just ensure that he dies. The worst thing that we could possibly do in this case is keep burning away. Mal yeah, someone deal with the malediction? They're gonna, yeah. they, they might warp to that stiletto, be, be careful, be careful, they might warp to that range. Stay aligned at all times, stay aligned at all times, deal with that tackle. You might have to manually pilot, um, like, away from their warping if they end up coming in. So at this point, we were pretty much in full control of the fight in terms of positioning. And, th they, you know, they want to get close, they get, there's no way possible for them to get close, other than warping to something at range. And um, in this circumstance, I assumed the stiletto was going to be the war pen. But um, it, it, one big disadvantage with their gang format is that they don't have much tackle. And um, I mean, they don't have much hard, long range tackle. And if their tackle ships decide to commit, they, they will die. There's no doubt about that. So if they do warp in, it does not necessarily mean we should uh, warp off immediately, but it might screw up with our um, a line. I mean, we cannot keep aligning towards the sun. So if they did warp in, the best thing we could do in this situation is just to, you know, try and manually pilot away from them, and then the fight can go back into the same stage as it was before the warp in. One Drake is coming. What is talking you? What is talking you? Stiletto, stiletto, Narmenis. Can you guys deal that Narmenis? I'm up again. I have point on the Drake, I have point on the Drake. Stiletto's going down, I hope. Nen anti support ships go for the Drake. Nen anti support ships go for the Drake. Everyone position themselves between. Uh, make sure you're towards the sun in respect to the Drake. Make sure you're towards the sun in respect to the Drake. The last 20 seconds is just a good example of um, good communication. It's very, very important to have this. If there's anything critical happening to you, such as, you know, our key pilot getting tackled by a stiletto, then you need to call it and you need to get someone to deal with it as soon as you can. It's always best to make sure that brick ships, such as the brick, is not between you and your relying out. So, you know, the best way, to, the best thing to do in this case is just to reposition yourself and making sure that um, he's closer to the enemy gang than you are because you know he could be a viable warpin and um, he could get tackled too if everyone keeps aligning in his direction but it's always a good idea to reposition when a new warpin lands they might walk to the malediction you're right they're warping they're warping they're warping keep it be careful be careful if they're going to tackle you warp away if you're not if you're not safe warp if if they're within 30k of you warp if they're within 30k of you warp right now we can f no we can't finish this strike off pull range pull range pull range we're all good we're all good pull range the primary no yeah the primary me but i'm good maledictions tackling again okay go for that malediction guys all anti-support focus that malediction and the and the carries malediction and carries all anti-support go for both of them Ignore everything else. They can't warp to anything right now, so we're good. Scramble you need carries. you need to get to a close planet. You need to get to a close planet, then you can warp to Garmon. We'll get to a close planet, then warp to Garmon. So they didn't have the worst warping, and um, they landed within 20 kilometers of two of our guys, which forced them to warp off. And that broadsword put a bubble up. And um, the two guys that warped away, they want to, they need to re-enter the fight. And uh, warping to one of us right now is, you know, very risky because there's a, they're most likely going to be, suck they're most likely going to get sucked in by that bubble. But um, you notice that, you know, we're, we're right by a big planet. So if if that person warped to that planet and then warped to me, there's pretty much no chance of them getting sucked in by that bubble. It is very, very important to be ready for a mass warping like that though, and you need to respond really quickly if you're in any danger, or you're pretty much dead. Um. DPS on Prince, keep momentum up. Burn for sun. Kill that wreck, kill that wreck. Yeah, kill the wreck, kill the wreck, kill the wreck. If they're coming back, you need to go to close, st uh, close planets, and then walk to... Karma, although there's no bubbles here left anymore. There's nothing else for us to kill. 
Jonathan or Kara is very close. Maybe. You can walk to that wreck, I feel that's their devil. They're warping to go for Tarkov, burn for them guys. Uh, oh well, it's okay. <laughs> Damn. Can someone get that guy? No, it's okay. We we did. I think we did the best we can, considering. Don't you think? Yeah. Just killed the taco. A tornado um, also got killed because he warped in a few seconds after the enemy fleet warped off, and it, you know we just uh, picked them apart and killed them. Um, the main purpose of this video is just to show that when engaging um, fleets that are much bigger than yours, is that you're always um, you and the enemy gang is always limited by game mechanics and um, you always need to take advantage over it so in this case you know they had um, poor damage projection they had poor long range tackle while we had mobility and we had good anti-support DPS so in the end you know the only thing we could do was try to kill their tackle while staying mobile it's just very very important to know that there's an approach to nearly every single fight that will result in you possibly getting kills and not dying. It just takes a lot of um, experience and in some cases luck for these to go to planned. Regarding what I flew, you know, I flew the Macarial. Um, I flew it, it's, well pretty much the Macarial is exactly like a, t a tornado in terms of damage projection t for the most part. It's just you know it, the Bakara can soak up way way more damage. That's the most. That's the biggest underlying difference. But piloting it etc is still the same. And you might have noticed that I never shot the interceptors that was too close. I always went for the ones that was you know far away. That's because I've got no chance of tracking the closest ones. And you need to always take this on board when flying it, when killing interceptors. You're Keeping a conscious mind on your tracking goes a long way.